Good afternoon and welcome to the latest in the Big Picture Live series. I'm Ian Forsyth and with me today is Scott Armstrong from Visit Scotland. Hello Ian. Nice to see you today. Um, we'll come back to Scott in just a minute, but the usual logistics for those of you who haven't been on one of our webcasts before. Um, yes, we have some questions that we're going to ask Scott uh, because you know there's some important information that I think it will be useful for you to hear. Um, but also an opportunity for you to interact here. You can submit your questions to us and we'll get them through on the screen here and I'll be able to pass them on to Scott. Very simple to do, you'll see a little box on the right hand side, your right hand side of the video window that we're appearing in. Type your question and hit enter and by the wonders of modern technology it will find its way through to the screen in front of me. Um, so please, please, um, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Don't just make it about what we want to, to, to discuss today. It's your webcast as well. So today, um, Scott mm -hmm. from Visit Scotland. In a nutshell, Visit Scotland's job is essentially about making the most of the economic benefits that can come from tourism. Um, I think if I just look at the figures, 7 million trips to Scotland in 2011. 18 million nights in Scottish uh -huh. accommodation. That's a lot of people um, and must be a significant contributor to the economy. By the same token, over the last couple of years, we've had the difficulties of the economic scenario, uh -huh. not just in Scotland, but, but worldwide. Um, so before we, we go any further in terms of, of looking forward, um, what's your view on the principal challenges facing tourism in the Highlands just now? Okay, I mean, certainly the Highlands has got a number of challenges facing it. I think starting off, probably the biggest challenge at the moment is connectivity. And by connectivity, it's a combination of digital connectivity and transport connectivity. More and more people are doing business on, on the World Wide Web through the internet, so it's absolutely vital that businesses across the Highlands are able to get fast access to the internet. So super fast broadband is absolutely essential. So... That's a big challenge facing the Highlands. Fortunately, there's schemes in place that uh, HIE, Highlands Highlands Enterprise, are leading on to, to improve that situation. The digital connectivity, also connectivity by transport. People have got to get here. So our air links, our road links, our rail links are all vitally important as well. So access, the connectivity by access by transport is important. Another issue I think or challenge facing the Highlands is consistency of quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, quality has undoubtedly improved over the years in, in the Highlands and across Scotland as well. Definitely improvements there, but there is still an inconsistency of quality. And unfortunately, if people have a, a poor experience, that has a, has a, has a knock-on effect on how the Highlands is perceived yeah. uh, across, across uh, uh, the, the destinations which send visitors to our country. So consistency of quality is a, a, is a challenge. I think a third challenge is, is fuel costs. I mean, almost 80% of the visitors that come to the Highlands come by car, mm -hmm. and therefore the cost of fuel or the high cost of fuel is, a, is definitely a challenge. I, mean, I think what is going to be important is that businesses look at how, what they can offer visitors here, here who perhaps can then leave the car at, at their hotel, their bed and breakfast, and do other things. Yeah. But fuel costs... And the fourth area is really, I'll, I'll combine a few together, and they're not just facing the Highlands, but they're issues for the UK as a whole. And these three things are VAT, air passenger duty, and visas. Mm -hmm. you know, have a look at each of these three. With VAT, VAT in the UK is 20%. Mm -hmm. That's the highest in Europe for two yeah. visits. The average is 8.8%. .8%. And in fact, in the Eurozone, only four countries, the UK being one of the four, charge the full rate of VAT in a, on accommodation so we're immediately at a disadvantage there with VAT. With uh, air passenger duty, again, most major European countries uh, don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, we do. It's the highest in Europe, air passenger duty. And, for example, if a visitor's coming from, say, China or India, the average cost that will add to their journey to come to, um, to the UK is about £300 right. per person. So, again, a significant disadvantage we've got to that. And the third thing is visas. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, the UK is not part of what's called the Schengen Agreement, mm -hmm. um, and countries like uh, Germany and uh, France are. So Germany, for example, gets eight... T sorry, France gets eight times the number of Chinese visitors last year that the UK got, and France got six times 
the number of visitors. Not because they necessarily want to go to France or Germany before the UK, but it's much, much easier to get a visa. So these are, these are UK-wide issues, but again, they have a significant impact on tourism in the Highlands. So all these things, I like, are some of the major challenges that are facing tourism or the growth of tourism in the Highlands. It strikes me that with a lot, a lot of those listening to your answer, there's probably a limited amount you or indeed tourism businesses can do much about. But the one that does stick out, given you know, yes. the added cost for people to get here, if they do get here, it's about the quality of the experience. Um, what, what can realistically be done to ensure that somebody who spent their hard-earned cash actually ends up getting the best possible experience when they come to Scotland? Yes, I mean... The, 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 the quality of experience is vitally important. If people have a, have a good experience, they're much more likely to come back and they're going to much more likely to tell people about how, how a fantastic time they had in the Highlands in Scotland. So the quality of experience is really, really important. And I mean, the, the survey work that's been done with customers, you know, you know that um, customer satisfaction rates is very, very high in the Highlands. So we've got a good product and, and the vast bulk of people that come to the Highlands have a great time and they recommend the Highlands. But we should be always looking to improve the quality of the experience that we've got. And I think um, it's, it's important that we, have, we share best practice, um, we, um, that we can get advice through, um, through the business gateway and through other sources. So we're all working together to make sure this, this quality of experience is really top notch. And, and specifically from the point of view of Visit Scotland, you know, you're talking, you, you know, the, the sharing best practice, is that something you actively facilitate? Or are yeah, involved well, in what that? is it? There's a, it's called Tourism Intelligence Scotland, yep. and uh, we, we, we participate in that. And Tourism Intelligence Scotland have, got a, have an excellent website, and they produce a number of, of guides about, for example, up to do with, with, with wildlife watching or, or golf or walking, what businesses need to do to take advantage of these particular markets and what customers are looking for. So again, Tourism Intelligence Scotland and their website are really, really, really good tool to, to, to help businesses improve their own quality of, what, of their offering. Okay. So looking at this year then, in terms of how, how we've done it, I mean, I assume we have to wait till the end of yeah. the year to get properly analysed statistics, but, you know, the word in the street based on, you know, what people are saying to you and, and data mm -hmm. that you have collected so far, how does it look? Yeah, it is. You're quite right. It's mostly anecdotal evidence we've got uh, at this stage in time. I think the year, it's a middling year, I think is the best right. way to describe it. I think it, it's, it's not been a great year. It's not been a poor year. It, it's, a, it's a middling year. I think possibly we'll end up a little bit down in last year, maybe 2 or 3% down in last year. I think what uh, did come across is the, the first two weeks in July were poor. That was a, a, poor, a poor period. I think it was definitely an impact to the Olympics, mm -hmm. people staying at home. And, and watch the Olympics. There's some evidence of people now uh, taking a later holiday. So right. you know, we're hopeful this this you know the autumn period is going to prove to be quite a good good period. And again, different markets have responded in different ways. Self catering for a second year seems to have struggled right. more 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 than other sectors. So the self catering right. uh, sector seems to be struggling a little bit this 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 year. Again, some markets, for example, as you might expect, Spanish visitors hardly here at all. The Spanish economy is so weak, but German visitors held up well. The German economy right. is strong. So I think a middling year is probably the best way to describe it. And what's your thoughts on that self-catering side of things? Why do you think that is? Yeah, the self-catering, I mean, there's been a, a big increase in capacity for self-catering. Right. There's been an awful lot more uh, places, there's a lot more self-catering now in the market. Mm -hmm. So it, it may be just simply a reflection of, 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 of increased capacity. There's more self-catering units out there to be filled. Right. But um, the self-caterers last year seemed to have a difficult year. And again, that's the, the kind of comment that's coming back to us again this year. It's proving quite a challenging year for self-caterers. Right. More so than other, other more, sectors. More so than other sectors, yeah. Right. Now, I'm noticing, uh, encouragingly, we have a question in already. I just encourage more of you to submit them as we go along. So in a bid to encourage you to give us some more, I'm going to cut straight over to Keith's question. Thanks, Keith, for this one. Um, it's an interesting one. Will the Commonwealth Games help or hinder the Highlands? Now, oh, right, right, take. yes. It should help. It should help. I mean, I think what the Commonwealth Games and what the Olympics should do, it's, it's a showcase for the whole country. So the Olympics showcased the UK as a whole. I think the UK came out very, very favourably. 
and a lot of uh, media came across the Olympics. I mean, Visit Scotland, we were part of uh, what's called Scotland House down the Olympics, and we hosted a huge number of journalists who were able to tell them about Scotland and what Scotland had to offer. Uh, and then they, they will in turn go back to their own, their own countries and hopefully write features uh, about, about Scotland as a result of that. So what I think the Commonwealth Games will do is, again, it will showcase Scotland mm -hmm. uh, as a whole. So Scotland will get a, a much higher profile within, within the, certainly the Commonwealth countries. I think, though, what does also happen, which is the downside with things like the Olympics, the Football World Cup is another, another example. When there's a major sporting event like that, people tend to like to watch it yeah. at TV on, on, in their own homes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does have a down, down effect there. So I suspect with the Commonwealth Games, when it's on, we may actually get people wanting to watch the Commonwealth Games mm -hmm. in their own homes. Um, so maybe for that period of the Commonwealth Games, that might, it might potentially hinder the Highlands for that specific period. But I think in the bigger picture, it should definitely help because it will profile Scotland right. in, a much, in a much more significant way. So it's not an instant hit that everybody's here for the Commonwealth Games and will automatically come to the Highlands. No, I, don't, I, maybe I think that's right. I mean, I mean, I think that's what happened with the Olympics. You know, there was a lot of hopes people would come to the Olympics and then would tour other parts of the mm -hmm. UK. I think what, what actually happened is like, people were concerned with uh, prices in London, for example, for the Olympics and just how difficult it might be to, to travel to Britain through London. Yeah. And by far the number of interna most visit international visitors that come even to Scotland, they come in through South East England. Mm -hmm. So I think that deterred people. Um, so the Commonwealth Games, again, might have that, that impact. They might think that um, access during that period will be difficult to right. Scotland. But I think uh, certainly, uh, in, the, long, in the, 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 the longer, the bigger picture, it'll have a hugely positive impact on Scotland and, and the Highlands. Right, so it is that longer term. Yeah, a longer term. Longer term thing. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the fact, I mean, there's always been this thorny issue that's developed over the years right. with cheap flights in relation to people being able to go very yes, inexpensively uh, to you know, places where the sun might shine and, and mm -hmm. that's a good reason to, to go away. Um, why should people spend their hard-earned cash on a holiday in the Highlands as opposed to jumping on a cheap All oh, right, okay, okay. Well, the Highlands uh, genuinely has got a world-class tourism product. I mean, you might expect someone from Visit Scotland to say that, but we, we do, mm -hmm. we do. You know, the Highlands is without doubt one of the most beautiful areas in the world, not just in a European context, a world context. We've got a, a really rich uh, cultural history as well. We're a dramatic country. And in fact, when you speak to visitors who uh, at exhibitions, for example, abroad, you know, Scotland's quite, quite high up there as being a, you know, a destination that's very, very appealing. I mean, it won't appeal to all sorts. I mean, if someone wants to go to lie on a beach for two weeks, you're not going to attract that market yeah. to the Highlands. You're just not. So it's kind of knowing your markets. But we, we have got a, a genuinely world-class product. Um, but it will appeal to certain markets as well. So it's knowing that um, what markets you want to try and reach, what customers you want to try and reach, and, um, and be able to show exactly what sort of product you've got. So we're, we're one of the many, many, one of the truly uh, last wilderness areas. You know, parts of the Highlands yeah. um, is it, in a European context. It's, it's real, it's real wilderness stuff, and that's mm -hmm. very appealing to certain markets. So yeah. I think we really do have this world-class uh, product, and. Uh, that's the reason why people should come. I, and ha looking at that from uh -huh. the other side of the, the, the perspective, from right. the tourism industry itself, you get yep. people coming and spending their hard-earned cash. What would your tips be to them in terms of the actual tourism businesses to make the most of that, to make sure that these people go back and say, great experience, you really need to go? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it is offering a, a personable service, a quality service, so you're, you're, you're listening to what the customer's looking for. I mean, I think it's what most of uh, the, the, the businesses in the Highlands, they're, they're naturally friendly. We're naturally friendly people and we're welcoming people. And I think it's just, it's just to keep that going, but also to kind of to get an understanding of what there is to see and do in your own local area. Right. So I think it's, it's, you know, it is going to be important that businesses are aware of things that are happening in their area. You know, can suggest local walks for people to go to, perhaps are aware of the wildlife in an area and a little bit of the history and heritage of the area. So they are always making these uh, uh, added value suggestions of things to see and do in the area. Yeah, okay. So and value for money is always important as well. I mean, and value for money doesn't, doesn't mean cheap. That's, a, mm -hmm. that's an important element to, to, to recognise, is that there's value for money at, at every level. So you could be paying, you know, 
£100 per person for a dinner one night, but it can still be value for money yeah. if it's top end. So there's value for money at, at, at all ends, but offering value for money to people. So people come away thinking, yeah, that was, that was really good, that was worth it. Yeah, They're getting it right. Getting it right, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, I'm seeing that we've got another question in uh, from uh, Beppo, I think it is, if I'm reading this correctly. Uh, given that the Highlands possibly had the best summer of weather in the UK, uh, how can we spread this news and encourage visitors north rather than overseas? Now, that almost yeah. picks up on that. Yeah. Um, can we capitalise on the weather? We can at times. I mean, yes, you're quite right. The, the West Highlands in particular had, yeah, you're right, had some of the best weather uh, in, in the UK. And I think that's that, again. That's where the beauty of the internet comes in: is mm -hmm. that you're able to get you know messages out all the all the time about how just how wonderful the weather is at certain times. And again, it's incumbent. I think. Well, look, I, mean, I think everyone has their part to play. You know, individual businesses, hotels, etc. You know, they, they you know, to get in their websites. You know, the weather's great. Time to come now. Come now. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's 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 a good time to come. I mean, the weather for a lot of Scotland, including a lot of parts of the Highlands, was not good this year. But the West Highlands did well. And, yeah. uh, and I think often there is this perception that the further north you go, the worse the weather might be. So, yeah. you know, if you go north, it's poorer. And that's actually not always the case. Yeah. So it's a good point to make. And I think because, because of the beauty of the internet, and we get messages out instantly, yeah. we can get that message out to potential visitors. Right. Yeah, although I think it's probably a dangerous route to go down, go down to try and encourage people to come to Scotland purely on the basis of well, oh, yeah, on the basis yeah. of sunny weather. I mean, yeah. you know, part yes. of the appeal is the fact that things. Yeah, can I mean, I mean, Scotland's not a sunshine destination. Mm. It's not, and to certain markets, I mean, people tend to know what Scotland's likely to be. So, if you're Italian or Spanish, you're certainly not coming because of the weather. They yeah. get great weather most of the year, yeah. so you know, they, they they certainly don't mind having some. Some adverse. They expect it. They expect yeah. to get some adverse weather. That's that's not a problem. Um, but the weather does affect visitor numbers. Uh, there's no question about that. I mean, the main market uh, for the Highlands is still the UK, and you know we still in the UK would like to have some reasonable weather over over the summer. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you come to the Highlands and have a week of, of rain, it's disappointing, and that can affect it. It's, it's generally it's the, the subsequent year you yeah. have an impact yeah. on that because people have maybe tried. Scotland or the Highlands one year and if the weather's poor they say, right, I'm not going to risk that this next year and they'll head abroad yeah. so the weather does have a does have a big impact no question about that possibly more on the domestic market the much more market. much more so uh, in the domestic market yeah. yeah much more of an impact I do I do remember actually talking to someone at a bed and breakfast over on the west coast mm -hmm. a number of years ago where they had an American guest who was actually disappointed that the sun had been shining the whole time that they had been there because well, that's what they came from and that's not what they came yeah, to Scotland for. I, I think so. that's right. I think with certain certain markets where which come from hot climates, mm -hmm. you know, they almost the idea of a kind of misty, rainy Scotland for at least one day of their holidays. It's actually not. It's really not a problem. Yeah. it's really not a problem. I think there is does become a problem if it rains every single <laughs> day. Then I think that does have a negative impact, even sure. for people that come from warm. Uh, climates, you know, they do want to get out and about and experience, particularly the Highlands, you know, it's to all to do with activities, getting out there and enjoying, yeah. enjoying our, our, our landscape. So, you know, you do, it's better if you get some nice weather that or dry weather to, to, to do that. But I'm sure that's not something you Visit Scotland can actually control, unfortunately. No, unfortunately, <laughs> we can't control the weather. We've talked about, uh, I mean, uh, someone has written this down as yes. a staycationer, which yes, to me, yes. is, you know, obviously yeah. someone from the UK who holidays in Scotland, yes. I would assume. Um, is that where Visit Scotland are targeting their efforts just now, or is it about targeting efforts at other countries, and if so, where? Yeah, it, it's, it's a combination. I mean, roughly, uh, well, oh, about 90% of all the visitors to Scotland come from the UK. Uh, in the Highlands, a little bit less, but it's at least 85% of the visitors to the Highlands come from the UK, and in fact, almost half of these are Scots. Right. So the domestic market or the staycation market is hugely important. Uh, only around about 15% of visitors to the Highlands come from international destinations. And off that 15%, about 60% come from Europe. Right. About 25% come from North America and about 15% from the rest of the world. Remember, that's 15% off 15%. Mm -hmm. uh, but the international visitors spend more. So they only right. provide 10 to 15% of our visitors, they provide about 30% of our revenues. Right. So they're hugely important. 
but they're also uh, more seasonal international visitors. The UK visitors will come more throughout the year, whereas international visitors will tend to come more in the summer months, you know, they'll come June, July, August, yeah. September. Yeah. Um, so this, the, the UK, the domestic market, is hugely important. So certainly in Visit Scotland, we, 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 uh, we market to both. Mm -hmm. UK market, yep, yeah, still our main market, including Scotland. We're doing a lot of marketing now to try and get Scots out to explore their own country. Yeah. So marketing to Scotland has become more important to us. Um, but we do still target international markets. We, we prioritise the international markets because there's not every country, we don't have the resources to, sure. to target every country. So we do target a number of priority countries, mostly in Western Europe, um, but also Canada, the US and North America, and Australia and New Zealand right. uh, out with. So, so what's the thinking behind those, you know, picking those as target countries? Is that based on research? Or? Yes, it's based, it's based in research. Um, um, so it's basically these are the countries which are, are more likely um, to send visitors here. I mean, with countries like Australia and New Zealand, um, it's the ethnic links right. that are obviously strong. And Canada as well, yeah. it's the ethnic links is important. Where, for example, South America, it's going to be very hard to get South Americans to mm -hmm. come, although South America's closer to Scotland than Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. It's going to be much, much tougher to get Brazilians or Argentinians to come here than Australians or New Zealanders. So we target that way. But there's been a, the new, there's a new tourism strategy has been launched for Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, produced by, this, well, it's an industry-led an industry mm -hmm. strategy produced by the Scottish Tourism Alliance. And they've identified four markets that uh, it's got the opportunities for, for, for Scotland, certainly for Scotland going forward. First one is, is the UK market. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, that's the biggest one. Second market is what they refer to as near neighbours, and yeah. that's primarily Western Europe. It's Scandinavia, it's Germany, it's Holland, it's uh, France, it's Italy, and I think Spain. So that's right. the, the next main market. They then call, they call distant cousins. Uh -huh. And by distant cousins, that is the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. It's the ethnic links. Right. And then it's the emerging markets. Now, the emerging markets is still a small market, uh, but they anticipate that it could more than double in revenues over the next... Um, well, by the year 2020. Now, the emerging markets are China, India, Russia, and Bra the BRIC countries. Right. China, uh, uh, India, Russia, and uh, Brazil mm -hmm. as emerging markets. So that's been identified in the new tourism strategy as being the key markets going forward. Right. And is there a feeling there for, you know, okay, you've said that there's sometimes a family or cultural links for people. Mm -hmm. What are the other things that influences people's decisions to come to Scotland as opposed to, well, I don't know, what are the other places that people might compare Scotland with when they're making that? Decision? Yeah, I mean, for a lot of our, well, for the international visitors who come from long haul, mm -hmm. which is all US, Canada, etc., more often than not, there is, a, there is an ethnic link there, you know, right. that there's, a, there's a, a Scots ancestry. So that, that's the dominant factor, that, mm -hmm. why the put Scotland on their list as a country to come to. I mean, while they're here, they'll do all sorts of other things. I mean, the Americans, for example, are big in the golf market. Yeah. Um, Europeans, obviously, it's not an ethnic link. They mm -hmm. come here uh, for different reasons. I mean, Scotland is perceived and has been a, a very beautiful country, which mm -hmm. we genuinely are. And, of course, the Highlands is seen as being the most beautiful part of Scotland, which of course we are as well. So they come here primarily for the, the natural environment, but our history and heritage is important as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seen as being a kind of romantic country, a rugged country, a dramatic country. So that side's important. And activities are important as well. Um, um, I say the golf market is, is very important to, to some de to, for some destinations, Americans in particular, but countries like Swedes, the Swedes will come here. Um, but activities, and with walking by far and away, the main activity that, that people do. Right. It's by far the most popular activity that visitors do coming here on holiday. Right, not surprising, yeah. the, yeah. the, the scenery element. I'm um, going to pick up on noticing mm -hmm. another couple of questions coming in there, another one from, from Beppo. And this is an interesting right. one, and not surprising that it's come up, given you know, what's going on at, at the moment. Um, as the independence debate increases in temperature and the coverage increases, um, how can we set potential visitors' mind at rest that we can offer a predictable visit removing uncertainty? So, interesting. All oh, right, right. Right, I mean, I think... Ooh, it is an interesting question. I mean, I think what, all the debate about uh, 
Scottish independence or, or a yes or no. I mean, what it, what it, again, what it does do is uh, it, it raises the profile in many ways of Scotland in, in a worldwide basis. I mean, there's, there's lots of international uh, television companies are coming here to Scotland to, to see you know, what's happening. You know, mm -hmm. they're, in, they're interested in, in what's happening in Scotland. Um, but I think it's just to make sure that um, no matter what happens is that, um, you know, that um, we're reassuring everyone that Scotland's open for business, that we welcome visitors. There's not going to be any big changes, you know, the currency's not going to change or anything like that. That it's very much business as usual. There's just a debate going on at the moment in Scotland about what's uh, the future direction of our own, of our own government. But I mean, what, what, but, it, but it, it is raising the profile of Scotland. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a debate going on. And I think providing the, the, the debate internally remains a very mature debate. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really, really key. And I think we've also got to be very careful to make sure that uh, we don't alienate our main market in any way. And our main market, of course, is south of the border, yeah. is England. So that uh, people south of the border, the English and the Welsh, and the Northern Irish for that matter, that, you know, that they're very, very welcome to Scotland. You know, we, 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 you know they're, they're still our, our closest neighbours, closest friends, and we certainly welcome to come to Scotland. Always that reassurance as well. I think that's important that we, we, all, we all make sure that that message gets out there. Yeah. From individual businesses through to all, all the different agencies who are involved one way or the other in promoting Scotland. Yeah, so, I mean, I suppose at a, a political, but not really a, a, you know, a political allegiance level, regardless yep. of what your view is on independence, there's surely a responsibility there for politicians Correct. to make sure that the mature debate part Correct. doesn't damage not just tourism, but other industries as well. Yeah, and I think in fairness, that's the way it's been. You know, no one's been suggesting that uh, any barriers are going to come up. You know, I've never, ever heard any politician suggesting, you know, barriers going to appear. So I think, you know, the, the debate has to remain at that and also to remain that, um, you know, that, that we welcome, uh, you know, all our visitors. Yeah. That, I mean, um, and even those who would like to see Scotland being independent, that, um, and the, the debate in fairness has been like that, is that, you know, we're all part of, um, we're, we're neighbours, we're close neighbours and, uh, you know, good friends and that um, the other, all people from Britain are very welcome to come to Scotland and to the Highlands on holiday. Yeah. Okay. They're going to be looked after well when they come here. Regardless of regardless, the, regardless, regardless of a referendum. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another question here. Uh, Mary uh, has yeah. asked about marine tourism. So thanks for that one, Mary. Um, marine tourism has a great growth potential for Scotland, both sailing and cruise yeah. ships, particularly Scandinavia. Um, how do you see Scotland making the most of that market in coming years? Yes, um, absolutely. It's, it is a growth market. Uh, there is a project going on on the west coast at the moment called, I think it's called Sail West, and it's mm -hmm. very much a case of um, helping to improve um, the amount of moorings that are on the west coast. And there's been some real success stories uh, there. Um, new moorings put in at Loch Allen, uh, uh -huh. across a uh, in, in the Loch Aber area and, and at Malague, for example, and uh, being really, really well used. Um, and that's bringing a lot of business into the local communities there. Local restaurants, for example, are reporting a, a, a big increase in business there. So I think it's just to see that, 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 that still expanding. Um, cruise market as well has been, has been growing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, um, other ports such as Scrabster um, are, 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 are starting to attract cruise business in. And again, some of the West Coast ports uh, looking to try and uh, get a, a share of the cruise market. Fort William, for example, yeah. is, looking, is looking to get a share of that. So definitely potential there. The other thing you observe just going around um, um, is the amount of uh, increase in things like kayakers. Mm -hmm. you know, um, it used to be 15 years ago you saw this huge increase in mountain bikers. Mm -hmm. Loads and loads of cars you would see with mountain bikes in the back of them. You're now seeing that with, with kayaks. Mm -hmm. So clearly a, a growth there. So yeah, definitely a, a growth in marine, tu in marine tourism. Okay. Um, and it's making sure we've got to make sure the infrastructure is there in place that can accommodate um, that growth. Just looking at the cruise ship market yep. specifically, which is part of Mary's question, um, what do you think, what would your advice be to businesses in terms of making the most of that potential? Right, right. Well, uh, a lot of the, it's a good question because um, the, the, the cruise ships that come into ports, like for example at Inver Gordon, they've got, um, they've got trips already organised and booked in advance to mm -hmm. go, you know, the, and um, to, to various places. Um, 
and there's a, there's, a, there's a limited number of what's called ground handling agents actually take responsible for, for, uh, for these arrangements. So in a way, it's relatively difficult to break into, into right. that market. You know, you've really got to um, get your product out to one of the ground handlers to incorporate that within, within, the, the, within the tours. So I'm not sure really what um, the best advice for individual businesses. Generally, the businesses which are likely to get uh, business from the cruise market are kind of in there. So Dunrobin Castle, for example, yep. is Sutherland, or Arcot Castle, or some of the woolen mills or whiskey distilleries. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they have made the contact with these ground handlers. Yep. Um, the ground handlers know about them, uh, and it and will include them in itineraries if that's suitable to them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a, probably a case of... Um, um, probably having to contact some of the port authorities, such as Invergordon, and, and find out who some of the ground handlers are, and right. think, you know, is this a way we can, um, we can break into it? But it's also to be realistic as well. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. if you're a, you're a small business somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to be realistic and think, well, are, you know, groups coach business going to be, going to be taken to you from cruise business? Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's, there's opportunities there. So if, if you were sitting listening to this just now and mm -hmm. hearing the ground handler thing, either having known yeah. about it before yeah. or this is the first time you've heard it, you said go to, you know, potentially poor authorities. Yeah. Is there other advice out there for people? And if so, where should they go if that's something they feel that they're missing out on? Right. Uh, Oh, that's a good question. I'm not quite sure really where, where, where I say because, because a lot of the, 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 the tours are organised by ground handlers, it's, it's, a, it's a limited market and it's in right. a way quite difficult to, to, break, break, to break into right. that. Right. You know, it's, it's, I think maybe people have a perception that a, a big cruise boat pulls into harbour and suddenly there's 3,000 people, can I get a share yeah. of, some of, some, of that, yeah. some of that money? And it's not, it, it's not quite that straightforward. I mm -hmm. think if you're in, in Invergordon itself, for example, yes, the traders um, you know, work quite hard at getting to try and encourage people to, to visit their town, to visit yeah. their businesses. But if you're 50 or 60 miles away, yeah. then it's, it's a little bit harder to mm -hmm. do that. And I think um, it's primarily making contact with these, and it's a limited number of ground handlers. It's only two or three companies that arrange most of the trips for people who are coming off the boats. Right. And you know they they get they get their own percentage of that. Sure. So it's to be kind of aware of how of how that works. works. Yeah. Um, but that's really the routine. Uh -huh. it's, it's that's really the routine as opposed to thinking is there another routine? Yeah. It's yeah. it's you really got to make it that way. So that's a in a way a more a slightly more protected. Market, right. so you know, you've got to break in. It's, it's going to be it's going to be trickier to break into. Yeah. But I think you know the point you make that it's not just a case of three thousand people tumble off the boat and you no. can suddenly capitalise on all of those. No. I think that realism it, aspect. It's, it's the realistic bit. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's the realistic aspect of that. Right. Okay. Um, the tourism industry in, Highland, in the Highlands is mainly characterised by by a lot of, sort of small businesses mm -hmm. spread yeah. all over the place, yeah. which kind of builds. You know, it yeah. touches on what you've just said. Do you think that's a strength of the area or is that something that we need to work at to, to, to help improve the visitor experience? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of both. Uh -huh. it, it's certainly a strength. I mean, I think when, I mean, you're quite right. I mean, the Highlands is completely characterised by a large number of uh, small businesses. What it does mean is when people come to the Highlands, they get a, a very authentic experience. Mm -hmm. They get a very personable experience. I mean, the vast, vast majority of people who are working in tourism in the Highlands are very passionate about it, enthusiastic about it. So if you're, if you're staying with one of these businesses, or it's mm -hmm. a bed and breakfast or a guest house, whatever, or, or, or having, going to a cafe or a restaurant, you will tend to get a very enthusiastic and very personable service. So that's definitely a strength. It's yeah. definitely a strength. Um, um, I think some of the downside is, uh, if it is a downside, is that the people that are running these businesses are really, really busy running their business. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it can often be quite difficult maybe for them to allow themselves or their staff to actually go away in training courses, for example. So there's an issue, there's an issue that way. Uh, and tourism still, in many parts of the Highlands, is, is quite a, season, is a, well, is a seasonal business. Mm -hmm. So it's retaining staff, you know, over, throughout, throughout the year. That can be an issue as well. Um, so, th so there is certainly some, some challenges and issues for having a, a large number of small businesses. Right. Because they are kept very, very busy yeah. running their own business. But the tone seems to be that's more of a strength. Than, it's more than of a challenge. strength because, I mean, I, I, that, that would be my take. I think it's much yeah. more of a strength. I think when you come to a destination and, and you get uh, treated by, you know, you're, you're greeted by an owner, an owner mm -hmm. uh, of, of a business, you will often get a, this very personable 
uh, service very and it, it can be quite memorable in experiences yeah. like that you're getting away from the some of the some of the chains yeah and maybe a little bit less a, a more impersonal service at times uh -huh. so i think you know that's that's a real strength we, like, we've got in the highlands right so the message is really make the most of that yeah absolutely and yeah. um, we're getting a, a good stream of questions in here but i would just remind you i'll just check my watch we've got only got about 15 minutes left to go to till we're finished so I would really encourage you, if you do have questions that you're sitting there that you would like to ask, get them in now and we'll do our best to, to cover those with Scott. But I'm going to move on to another one from the audience. Yes, absolutely. Um, from Basil this time. And he's asking about Rock Ness and Belladrum. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. A significant new aspect of Highland tourism? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, a kind of event-led tourism. Um, and things like Rock Ness and Belladrum uh, brings in a, a different audience, a different a different market. I mean, the Highlands kind of traditionally has had a, a, a slightly more older market comes to the Highlands, which this is bringing in a much younger audience. Uh, and certainly for weekends like that, the, the local area is absolutely packed out. And I think, again, going back to a, a longer term view as well, sometimes that could be the uh, young people's first visit to the Highlands. Mm -hmm. And actually maybe five, ten years from now, they'll come back. Yeah, that's, that's a different yeah. sort of holiday maker. So it has immediate benefit straight away by bringing by making a local area very very busy. Right. So immediate benefits and longer term visit uh, benefits as well. So yes, events like that in Lupulu and in Alapool, um, yeah, f re relatively recent phenomenon, but a really really welcome one and definitely making a big impact and help to, to Highland tourism. Yeah. And something that, as you say, has a longer term effect. Correct, it's got a longer term impact as well. I'm just going to pick up on another question here, going back to um, specifically about the, the, the kayaking um, mm -hmm. in northwest Scotland. Uh, southwest Chile, uh, New Zealand, and the west coast of Canada, also good for that. Mm -hmm. What's being done to promote the international nature of this market? Oh, right, good question. Um, I mean, again, within our uh, within our own international marketing mm -hmm. uh, team, you know, we do target certain markets and we do get the messages out about what Scotland's, particularly the strengths of Scotland, what Scotland's got to offer. And the message varies from market to market. So, for example, in countries like Australia and New Zealand, we will um, emphasise the, the kind of uh, ancestral side of things. Mm -hmm. in, a, in, other, in other countries, we'll emphasise more... Um, history and heritage, for example, yeah. or it can be activities. So depending on where the market is, we think that they're going to be attracted to Scotland to do an activities, then kayaking or other activities will form part of that. Um, I mean, I think it's still been, that my, certainly my observation is the bulk of people who are doing the kayaking at the moment in, in Scotland are, have got their own kayaks, they're bringing their own kayaks, yeah. whereas international visitors will clearly need to start hiring kayaks. So it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation as right. that market grows commercial business will move in and start offering kayaks for hire. So it's definitely a growing market and I think we'll see more growth uh, uh, moving ahead. Okay. Going back to the quality aspect, yep. um, what initiatives are Visit Scotland involved in to, to try and ensure that the quality of the tourism product is as good as it can be? Yeah, I mean, Visit Scotland, we're primarily a marketing organisation, yeah. so it's not we don't take the lead on that side of things. But I think it's, it's, it's largely with some of our partner uh, organisations. So it's, it's, it's people like Business Gateway being run through the council, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, Skills Development Scotland. Um, they're the organisations that take much more of a lead in that. I think a lot of it, though, is to do with, um, with sharing of best, best practice, and that's also where uh, the destination management organisations come in in the Highlands, the DMOs, mm -hmm. where they're um, working with the industry to try and find out uh, the needs for the, of the industry and what the industry feels they, they need to help, to help themselves improve the quality of their products. So there's a whole range of uh, different partner organisations involved in trying to, trying to help the industry um, to um, improve the, the quality of, uh, of what they're offering. Okay. Um, flicking through some yeah. of the other questions we were going to cover today, I think you've, you've covered a number okay. of them. Uh -huh. But I'm going to jump to one that kind of, that, that kind of appealed to me. Right. It was the, it's the kind of three wishes question. Oh, right. Right. If, you, right. if you had right. three wishes yeah. uh, at things that you could do to change the nature of, of how things happen here to bring more tourists and make it a better experience, what would be the three things right, you would do? Right, right. I mean, I'd have been tempted to say straight away to get rid of the midges, but I'm assuming <laughs> that, that you can't do that. I mean, I, 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 think, I mean I, I think going back again to, to, to connectivity, 
is mm -hmm. going to be important. I think you know the kind of digital connectivity. Well, connectivity in a wider sense is is, hu is hugely is hugely important. So I think that that becomes one one of my wishes that 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 happens. I think VAT as well mm -hmm. would be would be a, an, an important because if we could lower VAT yeah. on the sort of tourism services side of things, you know, that would immediately make us more more competitive. For a third thing, yeah, I, th I think probably to get more direct flights right. into the Highlands. You know, Inverness uh, Airport, sorry, HIAL, H-I-A-L, they, you know, they work very hard at trying to attract, you know, more flights in, mm -hmm. in, in directly into to the Highlands. And I think that would have an impact. So again, it's, it's access. So more direct flights into the Highlands would, I think, would be on my wish list as well. Right. Okay. I mean, we're st still on that same theme yeah. with the, the Brave yeah. movie. Yeah. It's like, you know, the wishes and all of yeah. that stuff. Um, Obviously, Visit Scotland's invested heavily in, in mm -hmm. that. How do you feel the results from that have, have gone so far? I know the movie's only been out for, you know, a, a couple of months or so. Yeah. What's yeah. your feeling in terms of what that has done? Uh, I mean, it's still early days. I mean, I think uh, we go back to the sort of peak years ever in Scottish tourism. We're going back to 96 um, and 97. Mm -hmm. And that was in the back of the film Braveheart. That had a huge impact on Scottish tourism. Um, and I think we've always, you know, film tourism has an impact. And yeah. Braveheart was as a massive, massive impact. I think we've always kind of looked to see, well, will another film come along which will have a similar sort of impact? So, I mean, there's hopes that Brave will have a good impact. I, I don't think it's going to have the same impact that Braveheart will have. It won't right. have that. Right. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, um, you know it's, it's being shown in 72 countries worldwide. Mm -hmm. you know, I, think, I think every country in Europe is showing Brave. It's been shown in some quite unusual countries. It's been the Lebanon, the Philippines, Uruguay, right. countries like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it, there's, there's a massive exposure. It's a nice film. It's a really nice film. It's some of the cliches of Scotland, the Highlands comes out in that. But nevertheless, Scotland comes across again, and, and it's the Highlands, of course, it's set in the film yeah. set in the Highlands. So it comes across as this really very beautiful country, spectacularly beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And again, um, you know, the, the kind of heritage sides there. So the kind of key message about what Scotland and the Highlands is all about are there in the film. Yeah. So you know, you do then think or hope. That that, um, that that profile we've then got, and in, in really in a, very much on a worldwide basis, will then plant the seed to people that to put Scotland on, on their potential list of, of, of as a holiday destination. Mm -hmm. So it will definitely, definitely, definitely do Scotland and the Highlands good. It's just the degree of good that it will right. do. Yeah. And, and, and we'll have to wait to see. Have to wait and that. see. And certainly within Visit Scotland, we've been, we, we were investing a, it's a £7 million marketing campaign, specifically in the back of Brave. Uh -huh. We got an extra £5 million directly from the Scottish Government this year, purely to do some additional marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's allowed us to do television and cinema advertising uh, on the back of Brave, which we've never done before. For example, this year we've done television advertising in the US. Mm -hmm. we've, and it's been 10 years since we've ever done any television advertising in the United States. Right. So this additional money is being allowed us to do, to do that. Yeah. Um, it's also been a great opportunity to bring the press to the area. In mm -hmm. June this year, we had the biggest ever press group that uh, we've ever brought to Scotland. With 130 journalists right. came on a brave press trip. Uh -huh. And again, there's been a lot of uh, media coverage directly as a result of that. So you do need the hook, and brave has been the hook to, right. to bring in journalists at that. So it is early days, um, but it will, it will do us good, no question about that. And again, you know, with the, with the Ryder Cup coming up mm -hmm. on the other side of the Atlantic yep. in a, a couple of days' yep. time, tomorrow, yep. probably, um, next time around it's going to be in Scotland, yep. it's going to be at Glen, Glen Eagles. Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that impacting on the Highlands? Do you think that people will, you know, that will, that will attract additional visitors? Yeah, yes. The answer is yes. I mean, the, all these events, big events, ha have an impact. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about that. I mean, yes, the, the Ryder Cup's been played at Glen Eagles. Uh, I mean, Scotland's the home of golf. Um, I mean, the places that will benefit the most from the Ryder Cup, I suspect, will be the, the main golfing area. So it's going to be places like the Ayrshire Coast, like East Lothian, like Fife, St Andrews and Fife. Uh, but the Highlands will benefit from that. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the Open, the Scottish Open at Castle Stewart, I think, raised the whole profile of the Highlands. And if people are aware that the Highlands has got some, some really good golf courses, that you, um, you don't just have to go to the Ayrshire's and the Fife's, that yeah. the Highlands is, is, is another option. And in fact, a lot of the courses we've got are in the backdrop is, is, is superb. Yeah. So you can, you can golf in 
I don't know, Carbridge or Boat of Garton or someplace like that and have, and have, a, and have a, a wonderful experience all, all around. As well as some of the really good uh, links courses on the coast at Dornoch and at Nairn, mm -hmm. Castle Stewart obviously. So yeah, the Ryder Cup will do as good as well. Yeah. For, uh, I think probably the final question we'll uh -huh. be able to take from the audience, just to, to, to summarise a little, is again it's going back to the, the, the kayaking thing and, and mm -hmm. someone saying that um, the infrastructure does exist. Um, but who should operators ask for assistance in this market? That's maybe a wider, a, a wider mm -hmm. question than just you know, that particular sector. If there's a sector generally that feels mm -hmm. it would benefit from assistance in marketing mm -hmm. the area, marketing the product, what should they do? Yeah, well, if a sector itself can come together in some way, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, if it's someone like a kayak, of kayak of operators who are offering kayaking holidays can come together, then uh, they can apply to Visit Scotland for marketing funds. Mm -hmm. We have got a scheme called our Growth Fund, which is aimed at marketing groups or groups or groups of businesses. And a group only has to be like three businesses or more. Right. And uh, they can apply to us for marketing funds, and our intervention rate is 50%. Right. So if some, if the, some of the kayaking operators can, can come together uh -huh. um, and say this is the sort of, and prepare a marketing plan, although we'll, we'll help them prepare that marketing plan, um, they've obviously got to invest themselves, quite yeah. rightly, in putting in some money. But, you know, it's 50% funding that we can give. Right. So, so in get, other words, get together double, and uh, yeah. we, we're there, come and speak to us. And, and uh, double up your investment. Our growth, our growth fund advisors based here in Inverness, at right. Crown House in Inverness. Right. So, so we're not far away. should check on the website or contact yes, the Yes, yeah. I mean, our industry website is visitscotland.org. Okay. Right, visitscotland.com is the consumer website, but mm -hmm. visitscotland.org. Is the, is the industry website. So have a look at that and there's, there's details there about um, our growth fund. Okay, right, that sounds as though it might be of interest to, yeah, to a absolutely. few people watching. Um, we're getting very close to running out of time, mm -hmm. but I, I, I couldn't not ask these last couple of right. questions that Ian had kindly dropped in here. Um, they're slightly more personal level, right. but you'd expect something like that. Okay. Uh -huh. um, you're given the whole world as an option for a holiday. Where would you go? Oh, right, right. Well, I mean... Try not to be biased. I, I love the West Highlands. Uh -huh. I really like the West Highlands. So all parts of the West Highlands, Mull, you know, Glencoe, Skye, Westeros, Ascent, and across to Harris and Barra. I, I love that. I think that's that's generally world class. And in fact, the first week of the, the October holidays, um, I'm off to, to Argyll, to Tevalach right. for a week's right. a week's holiday there. So we'll get some walking done and, and some mountain biking stuff like that. So the West Highlands I like a lot. In an international context, um, I think we'd, we'd one really good experience uh, a few years ago in holiday and we were in um, the Dolomites in mm -hmm. Italy or the South, South Tyrol part. And I thought they got that right. I mean, I like spectacular scenery. So yeah. the scenery in the Dolomites is just, it's, it's wonderful. It's really, it's really outstanding. But it's part of Italy and that part used to, of, of, uh, of Italy, the South uh, Tyrol, used to be a part of Austria. Mm -hmm. So what you actually got was all the, the charm and the, the, the friendliness and the warmth of the Italians mm -hmm. and the efficiency of the Germans or right. the Austrians. Right. And that was a real potent mix. Yeah. You know, a really, really spectacular destination and yet charming, friendly, exuberant people, yeah. Italians, but still very efficient. Right. And wow, that was a that was a good mix. Real <laughs> that was a real that was a real good combination. Right. I was really impressed with that. Right. So that, that was an interesting one. But the West Coast. The West Coast. In spite of the midges. Yeah, in, in spite, spite of, of the midges, midges, the West Coast is still the best. Just finally then, just very briefly, um, the Year of Naturals coming up yeah. next year. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit, just very briefly, what that's all about? Yeah, it's one of the themed years. Um, there's a themed year each year, so 2013 is the Year of Natural Scotland, uh, which is absolutely uh, appropriate and relevant to, to the Highlands. So, um, again, look at visitscotland.org. Mm -hmm. um, there will be information there about the Year of Natural Scotland. There's, um, there will be a, 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 a toolkit for the industry to, to, to see how they can, can link into that. There's a, again, there's a, a, a growth fund specifically for the Year of Natural Scotland that uh, organisations or groups can, can bid into. Uh, so it's just very much highlighting what Scotland and the Highlands has uh, 
that visitors can enjoy in the, in the outdoors, the natural right. environment. That includes wildlife as, as well as uh, the scenery. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so appropriate for the Highlands. It's a great opportunity for us. Right, a great opportunity for tourism operators absolutely. To, make, to make the most of the yep. resources yep. on the yep. doorstep. Yep. Absolutely. That's great, Scott. Thanks very much. We've Thank kind you. of run out of time, but it's been really, really good to, to have that chat and, and hear your insights. But I have to confess that that last question about the Year of Natural did have a kind of ulterior motive behind it. Um, we hope hope to be able to announce very soon that there'll be a series of webcasts being uh, run over the coming months specifically about the Year of Natural and specifically about how tourism businesses can use that initiative to their advantage. Um, before we finish today, one of the things that I just would like, you to a like to ask you is that we're looking at the timings of these webcasts. Now, I know we've generally gone for around about lunchtime that may not be the best time for tourism operators. So if you're in the tourism industry um, and we are saying to you, yeah, there might be some webcasts coming up over the next few months that will be of benefit to you, can you type in the little text box just a time that would suit you best? It's not a very scientific poll, but we would really like to get your feedback. Um, and also from you, any suggestions in terms of the sorts of things you'd like to hear about the Year of Natural? what information would be of benefit to you because again if you can type that into the chat box that would be hugely useful to us and we hope to be making an announcement in the very near future about a series of webcasts that will help you to make the most of that initiative so it remains for me just to say thanks again scott for your time today uh, also to the loch ness country house hotel for providing the facilities um, and to say thank you to you for logging in uh, we hope to see you again soon next time around